in this end time you must pay the price to know God for yourself listen this corporate knowledge of God will not stand the test of time the days that are coming will require the Bible says but the people that do know their God that do know their God they are the ones who will be strong and will do exploits there are things I know about God I will die believing the rate at which believers vacillate convictions is a proof that we have not encountered God. It's amazing how someone can believe something today and walk in that conviction, write books about it, and two weeks later, he's not sure again. You can't mentor a generation like that. Unbendable conviction based on something you have seen. A man of God that is into great deliverance um, was confronted by another man and said, look, you are always doing this thing. The people say, stop misleading these people. And he looked at him. He said, why are you talking like this? He said, go and find out about my educational qualification and everything I had. For me to leave all of that and be doing what I'm doing, you should know that it's not just that I read a book. There is an encounter. What I've seen is too real. I'm just pitying you because very soon you will need me. That's what the man told him. He said, you are under attack. That's why you are talking. My knowledge has shown me that whoever talks like you is under attack. Some months ago in this nation, I'm not one who comments on things that happen on social media, but I understand there was a debate that had to do with tithing. Shame on the church. Shame on us times infinity for being so confused because a man who didn't have any rights just got up and wrote a proposition. It's proof that we have not been doing it by faith. It's proof that it's not a derivative of a dimension of God we've had. That means someone can get up today and say, hey, Jimmy, loving your wife is sin. And all of a sudden, he looks at this woman and says, I know you gave me two children. Walk out of my house. Why? Because a man said, loving your wife is bad. We become slaves to the ideas of people. Just because they are bold in communicating the idea does not mean they are right. Our generation is an arrogant generation. In the height of our failure, we are still bragging. You need to know God to survive the pride of this generation. You will meet somebody who will tell you, I'm in business, I don't tithe, I don't give, I'm a millionaire. Keep watching. When he finishes deceiving you, he will crash and repent and start tithing while you are suffering from his teaching. Many people today who have advocated error have repented quietly and they are doing what they once misled people into. But many other people are there suffering. Are we blessed? We need to know God for ourselves. We need to know God for ourselves. This generic knowledge of God... That's why for many of us, every little thing, you are looking for someone. There's nothing wrong with someone agreeing with you. But I mean, something touches your head. Um, please, uh, Jimmy, are you awake? Venga, are you awake? Promise, are you awake? Uh, Pastor Alpha, who can I call? Where, where will you know God for yourself? Then you now text the people back and say, pray. Then they say, okay, and pray. Didn't you know? Is that a news? If you do not know God for yourself, then let me tell you, when God begins to expose some of us, you know, the privilege that God has given me to meet people, sometimes I sit down and I hear them talk. I can't believe a man can be this arrogant in error. Just because there's small money or small results around, you hear people talking, being sarcastic or men of God, and you look at that person and you know, I can look at a man and know what spiritual law you are breaking and know what consequence is waiting for you, even while you are bragging. Ah, I insulted a man of God. I did this and that, and I went in peace. Look at the foolish man that is talking. The Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. 
he reproved kings for their sake. The person is laughing. Ten years later, you will see the man at a railway station just standing with his shoes. Say, sir, what happened? That prophecy kept trailing him like a policeman trailing a thief. And he thought just because he was free for two, three years, the word of God will stay till it judges everything. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm, like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went. But the one who says he was not going to go, at a point he thought within himself and said, My father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, um, probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to, them, to this message was a waste. So it is not about what you share alone. It's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of th those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around